So Baltimore Ravens mandatory mini camp is officially over. It's in the books. That's a wrap. We'll see the fellas in six weeks when they report back for training camp. But how did they end things off? Well, we're going to listen to three different reports and let me know if you hear a common theme. The first one came from my guy Cordell Woodland. He said, Ravens mini camp wraps up. Really good day for Rashad Bateman. Haven't seen him this involved in the offense all offseason. So it was good to see he and Lamar connect often overall i thought both sides of the ball had their moments today good camp overall for the team next up uh, my guy Nikhil meta he said lamar jackson hit a few nice passes downfield during seven on seven work rifling a completion to rashad bateman in traffic then arcing a beautiful deep ball to Devontae's walker for a touchdown next up my guy jeff zrebic he said raven's final day of minicamp was a much lighter day than the previous two rashad bateman was busiest wide receiver on the day mark andrews made a couple of catches roquan smith had an end zone interception ravens now break for about six weeks before the start of training camp so you hear that name that just keeps ringing yeah it's rashad bateman him and lamar jackson they're getting it they get in. And yeah, it's mini camp. Yeah, there ain't no pads on right now. Yeah, today was even a lighter practice. But I'd much rather be hearing about positives with Rashad Bateman than negatives, especially now. Obviously, it's going to get much more harder. Obviously, it's going to get a lot more physical once the pads come on for training camp. But to carry this momentum with you for the next six weeks and heading into training camp, that's a beautiful way to end off mini camp. But it didn't stop there because Baldy, apparently, Baldy was in the building. Brian Baldinger. And he said the following. He said, Ravens and Zay Flowers, the Zay Hey kid, looking even quicker and more lethal in year two. So high praise for wide receiver uh, Zay Flowers, who is going into the second year of his career. But my guy Nate replied to that. He said, Baltimore is finally getting a wide receiver one. And he put a picture of Zay Flowers. But then Brian Baldinger replied with this. He said, Bateman is really good. So is he trying to sort of let it be known like, hey, they got a, a number one wide receiver in Rashad Bateman, or they could possibly have two number one wide receivers in both Zay and Bate. Only time will tell, baby. Now, the positive news that we've been hearing about Rashad Bateman wasn't the only good sign that we got from the Baltimore Ravens after this three-day minicamp. Jeff Ribbick said the following, barring setbacks over the next month, the Ravens should enter training camp with a good health situation. And yeah, pretty much everybody should be good to go for training camp. And, and that's a beautiful thing because I just hate when roster spots are decided, when competitions are decided by injuries. That's the worst because you don't truly get to see who is the best of the best. You, you do see who the last man standing is, but is that last man standing truly the one who would have won the job had everybody been healthy? And I know it's football. It's a very physical sport. Nobody's ever, not the whole team is ever going to be fully healthy. But we just hope for the best when it comes to the health situation. Now, he also said uh, running back Keith Mitchell, he won't be ready. And that's obvious. We, we, we knew that from last year with him being hurt so late in the year last year and that being a significant injury. And he said, but as of now, that's, on, that's the only known long-term issue. Most other guys not practicing this week were running on the side fields, which is a good sign. Like Kyle Hamilton, he was recovering from whatever procedure he had on his elbow. Uh, then Adisa Isaac, he was dealing with a hamstring injury, but they said that it shouldn't be anything too serious now. Uh, the only one that is concerning is Marlon Humphrey because Harbaugh said that Marlon Humphrey is dealing with some nagging things, but that he should be ready for training camp and, and that should be that is concerning man because we know last year and Harbaugh was very vague on it. he didn't say what it was didn't say what the issue was or whatnot but we know last for the past couple of years really Marlon Humphrey has been banged up Marlon Humphrey has been hurt Marlon Humphrey has been beat up he's missed a significant amount of time over the past couple of years due to injury last year it was the foot injury um I think the year before it was what the pec injury uh, so he's just been going through it. Uh, so hopefully this is not the beginning of the end for Marlon Humphrey. I don't think it is. Uh, again, it's football. Football is very physical, so injuries happen. But you hate to see when they just keep piling up over and over. Now, it has been different things, so that's not a good sign, but it is a good sign that it's not the same thing that just keeps reoccurring. And hopefully with this whole whatever the nagging issue is, 
it's just something small and it's just something minor. But uh, my guy Josh Hoffman, he asked Jeff Zrebic, he said, is nagging things and should be ready for training camp more than a little ominous or am I just conditioned that way? So he's a little like worried about what John Harbaugh said about Marlon Humphrey because John Harbaugh said he should be ready for training camp. Didn't say he necessarily would be, uh, but Jeff Zrebic said, I didn't take it that way. But again, I don't know. You try and read into John Harbaugh's wording and body language all the time, and you'll get some right, and you'll get some wrong. I think the positive was that Marlon Humphrey was out there on two of the three days doing stuff. So, yeah, I will definitely take that positive, uh, of course. But Jeff Zrebic is right. With John Harbaugh, you just never know, man. You, you, you never know because he could say one thing, and it could mean another. He could say another thing, and it could mean something different. Uh, but we just we will see when we get there. So six these next six weeks, hopefully Marlon Humphrey, he can rest up. And whatever he's dealing with, it can go bye-bye. Now, there's one quarterback that made the transition to wide receiver, that being Malik Cunningham, and he's been making a lot of plays. But there's a wide receiver who could possibly be making a transition to tight end. At least the Baltimore Ravens, they trying some stuff out with him, and that was Kadir Ishmael. Let's read the report from Jeff Zrebic. Uh, undrafted, free agent, wide receiver Kadir Ishmael worked some with the tight ends today. Harbaugh said the Ravens are just exploring some things, but... He's been very impressed with Ishmael, who made some plays this week. So, Kadir, like, look, like, I, I know it's going to be tough for me to make the team as a wide receiver. Let me try with the tight ends, too. Let me see how it goes. And, and the, the fact that the Ravens are willing to try him out there, it shows that they ain't haven't given up on him. Now, again, it, it's, it'll be tough either way because at wide receiver, Ravens got a lot of prospects there. They got, again, four guys that are locks. But then they got like two spots that a lot of guys are battling for. But then at tight end, you pretty much got three guys that are locks. Mark Andrews, I'd say likely Charlie Col Cola. Uh, but then after that, like, are they would they really carry a fourth tight end? Well, I would assume that this would be for the practice squad. And, and he could be battling. The, the, the main roster is nice. The 53-man roster is great. But that's not the only job that there is. That's not the only position that there is. Because the practice squad is a real thing. And they carry, what, 16 people on the practice squad, I believe. So there are opportunities for somebody to land on there if they don't make the active roster. Patrick Queen, I know a lot of Ravens fans were upset with him when he went to Pittsburgh. They said, oh, he's a sellout. Why would he do that? He's an opt out. Look, it's business. I, I wasn't going crazy when Patrick Queen, when he signed with Pittsburgh. I mean, he did it the same day that the Baltimore Ravens signed Derrick Henry. That, that's when he made it official that he was going to Pittsburgh. But I wasn't, I ain't care like that. Oh, he going to Pittsburgh, all right, cool, that should be fun. But Patrick Queen, he has been a very, very interesting Pittsburgh Steeler because first he says he wants to be the bad guy, he wants to be the villain, but then he has comments where it don't seem like he really wants to be the villain like that. But more recently, and of course I know y'all have seen it, where Patrick Queen has been talking about the food. He been talking about the food. He said, oh, Baltimore's food. Uh, but Pittsburgh, oh, yeah, they, 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 they got Baltimore on the food. And it, it just seems like it's one of those things where because he's in a new situation, taking little shots at the old situation. And, and it could be for a number of reasons. Could he really like the food better in Pittsburgh? Hey, maybe. Who knows? But I think it goes a lot deeper than that. Uh, when somebody is brought in to replace you because you haven't been doing the job up to the standard that they want you to do the job at, that can hurt. It's happened to a lot of us before. I know it's happened to me before, and it is a pain that's like, oh, man, am, am, am I not good enough? Uh, and you still got to stick around while that person is doing your job, and you're sort of doing a side job almost. Like, because Roquan Smith, they, they drafted Patrick Queen in, what, the first round in 2020? Uh, and he, he was up and down. He had some great moments, had some tough moments, and then he had some moments in between, but... Obviously, they said we can get better at inside linebacker. Let's bring on Roquan Smith. So they traded for him. They acquired him and they got him. And then they even signed him to a contract extension, made him the highest paid inside linebacker after he was with the team for like a couple of months. You have been with the team for a couple of years and they weren't even talking about no contract. So it, it, it was tough. And I know he wasn't eligible to after the third year, but still to, to, to have that be brought in your face. It's like, ooh, oh, my goodness. And who knows how their relationship ended. Uh, I don't know if Ravens offered him a contract or not, but regardless, he got his money from Pittsburgh. And he got some nice money from the Pittsburgh Steelers. But where I've been confused at, and, and it's been, uh, been kind of funny just listening to it and seeing it from different uh, articles and stuff, seeing different quotes. I, I've been seeing what Patrick Queen said. He went to Pittsburgh because he wants to win. And I'm like, what? <laughs> 
that look? Maybe he's talking about just winning, beating the Ravens, maybe because Ravens ain't been beating Steelers for a long time. They haven't beat the Steelers, I think, since like 2020. It's been a long time since Ravens beat Pittsburgh. But um, just him saying he went, he went there so he can. Well, let's just read this excerpt from the Athletic. It said, it is everything that you want. That's what Queen said about Pittsburgh. He said, you have a great head coach, a defense that can ball and put you in situa- in a, into a situation to succeed. I agree with that part. That defense do got playmakers all over. And now they got a T.J. Watt. They got a Cam Haywood. They got a Mingo Fitzpatrick. They got uh, Joey Porter Jr. They just brought Cam Sutton back. And I, I like him as a cornerback. Uh, but anyway, uh, he said, uh, I am at a point where I want to win. I know. <laughs> He said, I know Pittsburgh hasn't won anything in a while, but they were in the playoffs, so they have a chance. Now, hey, technically, he's not wrong because he said Pittsburgh hasn't won anything in a while, but they won the playoffs. Two things can be true. So I guess he's talking about winning that ultimate goal because with him having been on the Ravens since 2020, they've been, they won a lot of games in that time span. They won a whole lot of games. They've been doing a whole lot of winning since he's been in the building. But they obviously haven't achieved the ultimate goal, that being the Super Bowl. And I mean, really, <laughs> who besides the Chiefs have been uh, achieving that ultimate goal? Uh, but he said, uh, to me, the team got better at every position. It's just now at the point where we have to go do it. So, yeah, hey, with PQ, again, I, one thing I appreciate about everything that he's been doing this offseason is that he's lighting a fire under Ravens fans. He's lighting a fire uh under the Pittsburgh Steelers and he's just igniting reigniting this rivalry because it has fallen off a lot uh over the years it's just not nearly the same as what it used to be but hopefully with everything that Patrick Queen's been doing and we heard Derrick Henry the other day too Derrick Henry said I ain't had a bad meal since I've been in Baltimore so maybe he was taking a little shot at Patrick Queen but hey those two they got to meet in the middle of the field soon enough